Hello, everyone. I am here with a friend of mine, uh, David. Actually, how do you pronounce your last name? Erdjok. Erdjok. Er, er, Erdjok. Erdjok. Yeah, E-R-J-O-K. Yeah. Erdjok. 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 Yeah. Erdjok. I'm going to yeah. butcher it. You got it right. Thanks. Um, <laughs> hi, everyone. I am here. Hi, everyone. I am here uh, talking to a friend of mine from Kenya. His name is David Erdjok. Dave, um, thanks for joining us here. And uh, we just want to talk a little bit about some of your experiences and tell me a little bit about um, where you are now. Well, thank you, Chris, for inviting me. Um, well, right now I'm in Nairobi. Um, currently studying here in Nairobi. And it has been quite a journey from the last time we saw each other. Yeah, so um, it's been about two years since last we saw each other. What's been going mm -hmm. on in life? You, you've left uh, Kakuma, the refugee camp, and now you're in Nairobi and you're studying in university? Yes. Um, I, I left Kakuma in 20... It was 2019. 2019, January. That's when I joined the university um, here in Nairobi. I joined uh, Pan African Christian University, um, studying bachelor in communication. And it has been quite an experience and a really beautiful one. How does it feel to be in Nairobi? Um, tell me about college life in, in Nairobi. Well, at first, to be honest, at first, when I came to Nairobi, when I left Kuma coming here, I was afraid. Um, I was afraid of being, you know, being an outsider, uh, given the fact that I'm from Kuma refugee camp. So at first, I was a little bit, you know, not fitting in. So that was a little bit challenging for me. But as time went by, I think nobody even mind that I was a refugee. I mean, I made friends and, yeah, I built a little bit of community and, you know, involved myself in that community too. And there was, you know, there was so much love coming from them, not judging where I come from. Nice. Um, and what are you studying now? Communication. Um, I'm studying bachelor in communication. One, well, I mean, I want to specialize in radio and broadcast. Awesome. That's great. Tell me, um, are you still uh, are you still writing poems? Are you still rapping? Tell me about your artistic side. Well, my artistic side has not changed. Rather, it has really improved. Like really, really improved. And I think as time went by, um, the more I write, the more I get recognition. And this year, actually, this year I have, um, for, for me, as, as, a, as an individual and as a refugee, I think I have made a breakthrough um, in some of the platforms here in Nairobi. And so my artistic journey has really been, you know, it has really been great experience. And I am still continuing. Actually, I was um, planning to produce an album this year, but due to coronavirus and the lockdown, I don't think it's going to be possible until next year again. But my artistic journey is still continuing, um, same as my studies. And how, how is the virus affecting uh, Nairobi and, and, and the Kakuma refugee camp? And people should know probably that Kakuma, the refugee camp, is not close to Nairobi, right? It's a, it's a plane, plane yeah. ride away, right? Um, so how is the uh, coronavirus affecting uh, you know, your university life and how is it affecting the, the camp right now? Well, um, the lockdown happened, I think lockdown happened in January. Mm -hmm. That's, that's when everything was literally shut down, including the businesses and schools too. Um, at first it did affect me because I didn't know how to cope with it. And not just me, I think, I think it was almost everybody because we were not. We were like asking ourselves, "What is the next step?" And we have not finished the same stuff. But thanks to Park University management, I mean, we were able to have an online training, which enabled us to be able to you know to train online, study online, and also do exams online. So, coronavirus literally affects everything. But you know, when it comes to like uh, the section of studies. It has not really, um, you know, affect that much because we have, 
we have integrated the technology into, you know, into our lives now and using it to study. But I think everyone, especially me, I think I do miss that contact of having students around, friends around in that community. Well, I think that that's, that's a big difference now because we literally have to lock ourselves in the house. Right. We're more friends and we're hanging out with friends. Right. But, How about the camp? How about the camp? Is How is it affecting the camp? Well, at first, um, I know like before the lockdown, I think, Chris, you, you've been to Kokomo. Right. Before the lockdown, um, we had literally policies that were based around refugees movement. And that includes, we already had a lockdown before, you know, the coronavirus. And we had curfew before even coronavirus. So when coronavirus came, I don't think there were like a lot of, you know, well, measurements were taken, you know, for safety. But I don't think there were like um, a big step that was taken, you know, to make sure like refugees are safe. Because literally the camp was blocked and people were told no more movement going out of the camp which sort of affected me too, because I wanted to go to Kuma and visit my family. Oh, it didn't happen. And I am so happy so far to say that we only had one case in Kukuma refugee camp, which worried a lot of people, but right. they contained it. They isolated the, you know, the, the, uh, the patient. They had it under control, which I'm very happy because That's they're awesome. very vulnerable. That's great. Yeah. Well, let's get back to some of the, I think we were talking about is some of your poetry and some of your um, artistry. Um, what's the most recent thing that you've written so far? What have you been working on? Um, has it been poetry? Well, um, been... well recently we had, um, th th there's an event that happened every year in, here in Nairobi. And I am so happy to say that I, I was a part of it last year. And this year they called me back to be a part of it too. Mm -hmm. um, there's this platform called Refu Poet. Um, it's it, it's an, an event that happened every 20th of June, which is like the World Refugee Day. So this year, um, they invited me back, um, which was like a big thing for me, given the fact that I am a refugee and my art and my everything that I do, you know, artistically is based on refugee stories, telling their stories. Um, so it has been great. And recently, my latest writing. Um, it was la last month, but currently I'm writing, but I haven't released it yet. Be a surprise. But my latest project was the one that I did in in June, June, which mm -hmm. is it's called The Happening of the Perch. I know you have watched. I, I guess you have watched The Happening yeah. and the Perch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, so it's um, a poem, literally. You know, it's Go a ahead. poem that. Um, Sorry, okay. Um, it's a poem that, sorry um, for that. That's so cool. I chose two movies to, to be able to depict a message, you know, to the public. And those two movies were like The Happening, if you have ever watched it. And there's a movie called The Purge. Well, literally, um, I used The Happening, you know, to, to highlight the corona, coronavirus, which is literally, um, you know, upon everyone today. And I also use the, the purge, you know, to talk about the just I mean the injustice, um, the racial discrimination that is happening all around the world. And that, you know, that um literally talks about you know the death of you know George Floyd. So I use the happening in the purge to talk about the racial discrimination that is happening all around the world. And the happening, you know, to highlight the corona issues. So literally my point was based on that, on humanity, and to be able to highlight that using those two um, those two films was really amazing. And that's great. Um, and while we, were, while we were at the camp a couple years ago, you performed something for us, and it was the, I, I yes. think it's the working title of Dream of a Refugee Boy, and didn't you just, didn't you win an award for that, that particular poem? Yes, I won an award. Like I mean, I won the Migration, um, Migration poetry. Um, in, I forgot the country again. <laughs> I think um, it was Singapore. Yeah, right? I want to know. Yeah, Singapore. Thank you. Singapore. Um, mm -hmm. Seem to have. <laughs> I forgot what I won. That's so bad. <laughs> so yeah, I um, I won a second place with that poetry, but I didn't think it it 
I mean, even though it reached across the world to different audiences for them to be able to listen to refugee stories, I think it it has reached or uh, you know it has been heard that much, which which right. I think I, I will still keep on pushing it because Dream of a Refugee Boy is um it's not it does not only highlight what I go through. I mean, it talks about refugees, youth in general, and what they go through and their hopes, their dreams, you know. So, yeah, I remember uh, performing it. Yeah. Well, I, I know you haven't seen it yet. And um, we, yeah. I'm sorry that it's taken so long to get it to you. But uh, I kind of wanted, okay. wanted, wanted to be there the first time you watched it and see what you thought. Um, are there any uh, particular lines that uh, that jump out at you um, from this poem that that uh, are really meaningful to you? Yeah, um, there was a line, um, you know, in Dream of a Refugee Boy, where I said, "Young refugees getting old before they achieve their goals. Young refugees getting old before they make it to the pot of gold." You know. When I say young refugees getting old before they achieve their goals, young refugees getting old before they make it to the part of gold. I think if you have lived around Kuma for that long, you would have seen, you know, or you would have related to whatever that I said when I said young refugees getting old before they achieve their goals. And that is literally what is happening and still happening. We have generations, I think third generation in the Kuma refugee camp uh, that do not know their country. And seeing, you know, people that you literally grew up with or people that you used to you know getting all in the camp, it, it is very sad and heartbreaking. So, yeah, those two lines still hold very much and they're very dear when I, when I was portraying that message. Um, so let, we'll, we'll take so, a, yeah. let's take a listen yeah. to the video or take a watch of the video okay. and listen to, to the audio. But... Um, this is going to take me a second because yeah. I'm like working the controls and everything too. So I want to make it's sure okay. you're able to it's see okay. it and, as well. So just give me one second here and I will switch what you're seeing. All right, let's see if this works for you. This is uh, The okay. Dream of a Refugee Boy by David Erjok. My real name is Erjok Jokmakwe. Um, I'm from South Sudan. My spoken word is not about, you know, some pretty girls or, you know, of course, it's somehow the way I express myself. But mostly I talk about the stories that, um, that affect me, like something that happened to me or something that a lot of people can relate or the lifestyle people that are living in the camp. I want to be famous like Tupac, so my words can have an impact. Innovation, a source of motivation for the kids in Africa. A refugee boy from Karkuma, but where do I start? Cause being a refugee is not a walk in the park It's like I'm stuck in the dark, your dreams are valid Never lose hope Rather say build yourself and one day you fly away like Tony Stark There is nothing for something with these words Come hard work and persevering The effort, success, it's a no man land This is me, yes, this is me I'm lifting up what I was designed to be Necessity make the being, yes It's necessary to pull up in a century Necessity make the dream and that dreams make me They say he's the refugee's future's not clear to see Being a refugee does not define me, it's what inside me I'm not perfect but I'm trying Trying to paint the best picture of me Young refugees stuck on a one day island You know like one day I wanna be on TV like Oprah Stuck by Team Z Followed everywhere from the garden to the copa One day I wanna be a pilot One day I wanna be filled with rich spending vacation in Copacabana One day just one day I'll be stress free, sitting down, sipping soda and doing yoga, but When one day turn into someday, and someday turn into lost soap And lost soap turn into broken soul Living young refugees with a broken goal Young refugees getting all before they achieve their goals Young refugees getting all before they make it to the pot of gold I have a dream, I'm not talking about my Luther King Don't ever give up, lift your head up and sing And pray that you make it through a scheme for you to achieve These are dreams of a refugee boy What do you think? Oh, hang on a second. Sorry. Put me back a minute. This put me back. Thanks, buddy. That um, that was really fun to it me. Took, um, 
it, it was it was such a throwback for me. Um, and it, it's it gave. I mean, <laughs> um, thank you for showing me that. Really, um, absolutely. It absolutely. just reminded me the person that I was and the person that I want to be, and the side that I had lost. And looking at myself again, you know, the, the big transformation that I've went through for the last two years, it, it just makes me emotional, really. And it makes me want to push for more seeing that video. Awesome. Well, we're going to, uh, we'll put it up on YouTube so you can see it as many times as you want. Um, I have a couple more questions for you, maybe, uh, mostly okay. about... Kakuma and how things are going there. Um, you mentioned that you're going back to Kakuma in December. Um, yes. Do you, do you consider Kakuma home? Well, given the fact that I was born in Kakuma and grew up there, Kakuma, yeah, I consider Kakuma my home, my second home. I mean, my first and then South Sudan because I did not literally grew up there. Um, even though it's a refugee camp, I mean, there are so many uh, notions and you know misbeliefs about refugees. I still love Kukuma because Kukuma made me who I am today, and it literally, um, you know, it, it gave me that energy and you know that motives to be the person that I am today, and still striving to be that person. So, Kukuma, yeah, Kukuma is is my home. Yeah. Um. Do you, and you still have family living there, right? Sorry? You have family living there? Yes, I have my mother and my siblings back there. Yeah, I saw a picture of your sister. She looks a lot like you. Yeah, no, I know, I <laughs> know. Um, a lot of people say that, but I don't think so. No? Well, maybe they see it, but I don't see but it. Maybe a prettier version. Yeah, you can say that, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, so have you been in touch with anyone from Film Aid? Yes, I still, um, yeah, I still, um, I'm still in touch with Filmate. I mean, given the fact that they provided me with skills to be able to, you know, to provide defense for my family. Um, Filmate was literally, um, you know, was the foundation of where I started. Mm -hmm. And being here in Nairobi, it's amazing the fact that they have not forgotten about me too. The fact that they still call me and, you know, contract me to do some of their projects. So yeah, I've been in contact with Filmate. Um, I have done some work for them since I've been here in Nairobi, and I've even performed for them during film festival. So, yeah, I've been in, in touch with Filmate, and I am still in touch with them. How are they? How are they doing? They're still still uh, helping refugees make uh, documentaries and and uh, creating journalists. Yes, yes. Unfortunately, unfortunately, that has been disrupted this year by coronavirus. Um, because literally since every school was closed down, um, Filmate also did the same, um, not to risk having, you know, a big pop populace in one place. So they did not, they do not have classes this year, which I think um, it's a loss to a lot of young refugees back in Kumar because they were looking forward to being equipped with those, you know, those skills and being able to fence for their families. Right. Um, so, so what's next for you? What's what's next? You're in Nairobi now. Um, you're continuing your education. What do you? What's next? Well, um, what's next? That, that that is a question. It really hit me. I've not been thinking what's next. But my plan was um, after I finish, I graduate. I will definitely not stay here in Nairobi. Well, it would depend. God plan. Um, I was planning I would go to South Sudan to use my skills to, you know, to contribute to the development of the media industry in our country. But um, since we still have insecurity, I pray that when I finish, I might land a job. I don't know, but it's a future endeavor that we have no knowledge of. But we look well, forward to it. Well, I think you're going to be just fine. Um, it's really, for me, really inspiring to meet people like you, and you were. A huge help while we were, while we were in Kakuma, um, both both trips in Kakuma, thank um, you, and an, and a huge inspiration for me too. So I just kind of wanted to thank you for that, and um, yeah, and we'll just uh, we'll just stay in contact. Um, is there anything? Really how can you. how can people help uh, refugees in Kakuma? What in what ways? 
in what ways? Um, you know, I'm not. Let me say this. You know, a lot of people come, a lot of donors come, or a lot of helpers, people who have good will to be, you know, that want to help refugees out, do come to, um, you know, non-governmental organizations, which at the end of the day does not, you know, does not, you know, extend that hand that was given to them, you know, to be able to help those refugees. And in Kokuma Refugee Camp, if you look at, if you look at the, you know, the system and the education that we have today, I mean, I mean, literally, we have a 3% of all the refugees youth that do graduate from high school, only 3% do get an opportunity to go to university. And I'm one of the lucky ones. And it's not the lack of funds, because I do believe funds do come, but I, I'm not trying to accuse NGOs that they do send all money, but where all of those funds are used are not being used correctly where they're supposed to be used. So if anyone will have a good will of helping someone out individually, I mean, you can extend a hand out. If they, I mean, to a refugee, if you want to go to school, you would go because you might think that you have just helped one person. But that one person you have helped would extend his hand later or would be an inspiration to other people, you know, who have, I mean, who have lost hope. Just like what I talked about in my poem, you know, young refugees losing hope. It's because they don't think there is a way out. So if an individual like, uh, you know, um, Melissa, who is sponsoring me, um, you know, doing something for me, she did, didn't, didn't just help me but she did help my family through me. Mm. And that's by, you know, by giving me education, by giving me resources that I can be able to use in the future. So if anybody would want to help refugees and how they should help them, well, I would advise first, you go and, you know, go to the ground, go to Kukuma Refugee Camp, see how, see how it's going for yourself, you know, before you come to an NGO and, you know, trying to deliver help because that help doesn't always reach but individually, I think it can. It can. Right. Yeah. Well, um, it's been nice catching up with you, uh, David. And um, it's been nice uh, catching with you, Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll have to do it again sooner. This is great. Um, how nice is it to mm -hmm. to have a platform um, where we can talk face to face and um, I know still be thousands Thanks to technology. of technology. Yeah. I Thank think you. two about two years ago, I wouldn't know about this. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> Yeah, so uh, good luck to you. Uh, stay in contact. Um, I will send you a link to to your video. Thanks so much for letting us make it for you. Um, I'm really I'm really happy for you. I'm glad that you're in university. Thank you and, so uh, much. You know, send my love to the people of, of Film Aid and your family. And uh, thanks for. I'll oh, definitely do so. so. And thank you, Chris. It was nice yeah, seeing thanks. you again. Nice seeing you too, buddy. Bye. I'll catch you later. See you later. That's all we have for now. I'd like to thank David for taking the time out of his day to talk to us. I'd also like to thank the UNHCR for allowing us access to the refugee camps and for Film Aid for hosting us while we were there. Um, I'm going to leave you with a video that we made for Film Aid, and um, that organization does a huge service to refugees in Kakuma by teaching them tools to have their voices heard in journalism and in filmmaking. So until next time, I'm Chris Cotter from TaylorMade Media. Thanks for watching. I think the most important part of what Film Aid does is really in, in giving hope to the people, giving space to young people to get skills, realize their food potential, and have the space to practice that and really make a living and to have, for me, a dignified life. Film Aid actually helps a lot of youth in the camp, especially me. I'll, I'll, count, I'll count myself I'm one of them because if it wasn't for them right now, I wouldn't be here and I wouldn't have skills that I have right now um, to, you know, to put food on my table back at home. Sometimes, you know, you need someone to hold your hand, you need someone to lean on when you're almost getting shattered. So when I joined Filmmaid, I, I knew that they're going to help me through getting to where I wanted to be. Each year I make the statement that this is the best class. <laughs> Because the experience every single time is that it is a group of young, passionate people that I can say are hungry for knowledge. The media training students have been constantly full of 
desire to learn more, to know more, to be, to be the best at what they're doing. I feel great, like telling our own stories, telling the world, yo, we have a better life. We, 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 we have positive things from refugee camp, like telling the world that this is who we are. And not everyone in a refugee camp can tell their story. So I feel great, like being a voice to the voiceless. It's like that light in the morning when the sun rises. It shines a lot and it kind of like um, illuminates all of the area. So by telling one story, I'm able to shine a light on that person. That's what I love about telling a story. I kind of feel like I've brought someone from the dark and I've brought them to the light. My hopes for the future of FilmAid is to be able to replicate its method that is already successful in Kenya to actually provide solutions, protection to refugees in Eastern Central Africa. Uh, which spans, you know, from the camps in Ethiopia, camps in Tanzania, camps in Uganda, to be able to work with refugees to, to promote the dignity of man.